Ninja Turtles arcade game, video number one. S, F, B, F, S, C, back. Yes. Sounds like someone was overdubbing the music. <laughs> the vocal performance sounded like it was overdubbed. Well, we're doing it. We're playing the Ninja Turtles arcade game. I couldn't, well, let's put it, I could have put it off for another week. Um, I was playing all the NES games and I played the first two Game Boy games, but it's time to finally play the real McCoy. Let's upgrade our experience here. That music sounds like as such a gradient sounding soundtrack as you would expect from a Konami, I guess. Cowabunga. Playing as Raphael, because I want to I want to make sure the roll kicks in effect, and I'm pretty sure it is. Controls, uh, attack to jump, we're confirmed there. That's really all you need to know. It's a two-button fighter, and one of the buttons is for jumping. <laughs> so I don't know what you want here. And for the strategy guide, just to establish the basics, there's really nothing much to this game. I'll show you the controls in like 30 seconds. <laughs> it takes there's about 30 seconds worth of control to explain to people. Uh, that's fine. We'll never throw more than six at a time. That's cool, I guess. Two shredders. Yeah, one loses his helmet. That's a clone. Okay. And the commandments for determine who's going to pick up the pizza. We're playing solo. We don't care. You can save and load your progress in each game. Yeah, we're not going to do that. At least not for this playthrough. Fire! I love this music. Attack. This music's in stereo, too. Okay. There's a jump attack. I thought he had a roll kick. How do you do the roll kick? Okay, you have to hold toward and press attack and jump at the same time. Does Raphael even have a jumping attack? I guess he doesn't have a jumping attack. That's all the other turtles do. And those are the bombs that tell you to hurry up. This is the coin off. <laughs> You're not allowed to dilly dally in an arcade game. That's all you need to know. Like, those are the, those are the moves you have to do. So I guess if I chose a different turtle, I'd have different attacks. I don't know. Yeah, because I remember all the turtles are supposed to be the same, but Raphael has the roll kick. But there's really not much to it, I mean. The jump kick does three hits of damage. I want to say the regular jumping attack does four hit, does four points of damage, and the regular attack does two hits of damage, and that's it. You can throw them over their head, but I mean, what difference does it make? I mean, I want to say all the attacks do all the attacks do the same amount of damage in this game, don't they? In the home version, it was different. You can throw enemies over your head, but it's not like you can. Uh, did you do damage to another enemy when you throw them like that? Like is the enemy a projectile when you throw them, or is it just like a a random melee attack, like a, a random throw? Careful. See, you can't turn a foot soldier into a projectile. So, I mean, let's not kid ourselves about what kind of game this is. It's a very, very simplistic brawler. <laughs> That's really all it is. <laughs> but I can't do the roll kick. Can I hold down the attack button and then jump? No. So the timing on that's going to be kind of hard to do reliably. This music's in stereo, by the way, so I was not expecting that. And unlike the NES game, different enemy types can appear in the same in the same mob. 
as you would... Well. Yeah, still see different enemies appear in the same mob, unlike in the NES game where everyone was a clone. Enemies appeared in groups of two or three, but there were always twins or triplets. Twins or triplets. <laughs> you can only have three people on screen at once, by the way. Here we're going doing that all over again. When did I lose all these lives? I don't remember that. This game also has a nightmare move, which we'll probably practice a bit later. It is a very good fire effect, by the way. <laughs> I guess this is the first 16-bit game I've played in this collection so far. Ow! That was one. Two. Three. Ow! Then he pulls out the gun. Well, I can't switch turtles, can I? I can't switch turtles. Oh, well. Oh, that's how you do the jumping slash attack. You have to hold the jump button down, then hit him on the way down. That's not it either. Do you have to do it at the apex of your jump? Is that how that works? I guess that's how that works. Actually, you have actual combos. Yeah, you have actual combos in this arcade game. Unlike the NES game. <laughs> I guess that was James Avery's voice. <laughs> Back with the meter. Okay, don't they jump out of the manhole? Not that one. There they are. Okay. Graham sucks, bro. You are the least conspicuous ninja. It'll do. Didn't hit him. <laughs> oh well, it is what it is. Okay, so again, expect like, you know, another 40 minutes of this. <laughs> Ow, anti-air. Yeah, totally different voice actor. It is what it is. That is not, that's not Uncle Phil from Fr Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and that's disappointing. But hey, maybe they got an actual Japanese dude to do the English voice, who knows? <laughs> voice acting in video games back then wasn't great. <laughs> but when do, you act when do we actually get good voice acting in video games? Maybe Metal Gear Solid 1, that pro was probably it. I mean, was there, was there another video game? I mean, okay, Batman on the Sega CD, okay, fine. Adventures of Batman and Robin on the Sega CD. Okay, I guess that that's cheating though, because <laughs> they got Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill and Arlene Sorkin and everyone else to actually do their voices from the cartoon show. But if we're talking about like original video games with good voice acting, I mean, yeah, Metal Gear Solid was the first one probably. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, what else could have counted? I mean, what Dragon's Lair? <laughs> I didn't have any voice acting. Well, they had, they had very bad, they had extremely bad voice acting. You don't remember. Here's what you do. Go to YouTube and, and look up, search for Daphne Dragon's Lair, and you'll hear her voice, and you'll see that was a scratch. You'll hear that's a scratch voice. <laughs> don't kid yourself. They had a laser disc and all the technology in the world to add decent voice acting to that game, and I guess they did. So what are you going to do? <laughs> oh, man, I missed her. Oh, well. Well, watch the NES game. Actually, let me just go back and set that up. Hey! You're supposed to react. There we go. Now we got it. Okay. <laughs> we can move along now. You saw what you needed to see. <laughs> Crap. Of course, the rest of the town is completely abandoned. No one else seems to be paying attention to all the... Purple ninjas. Oh, we can knock them against the wall. There you go. <laughs> 
See, in the, at least in the NES game, bosses can do it to you, but you can't do it to enemies, as I recall. Which is an interesting decision, but I guess you have to... Cartridge, mem cartridge size limitations being what they are, you can, you can only add so many animation frames to a game. <laughs> so some stuff you just cut. But obviously this was a 16-bit game with a lot more memory to spare, so... They could add a whole bunch of stuff. And add a bunch of animation cycles and, you know, just... Ow! Yeah, not exactly David Wise written dialogue. Ow! So you can get in a couple of quick hits. Yeah, the bosses on the NES game seem to last forever. Those fights seem to last forever. I think it took like double. It took like fifth. It took like seventeen or eighteen. Yeah, seventeen or eighteen jump kicks to bring down. It was ridiculous. Here seems a bit more reasonable. Put your hands down, doofus. Ow. Look out. Got him. Yeah, these fights seem a lot shorter than the NES game. Not complaining. Some of those boss fights were interminable in the NES game. Maybe the game was properly balanced. <laughs> And I have... Oh, there's no... Oh, my health wasn't refilled. I was not expecting that. I, yeah, I can still... Bear, I can still almost never do the roll kick. The timing on that is very specific. And I'm still not really a fan of the hit detection here. If, if it, it feels like I'm kicking and punching Jello. So I'm not really a fan of the hit detection in this game. Like, it's not as tight as a game like Final Fight. The hits really don't have that much impact either. It just feels like you're just like it just feels like kind of swinging in their general area, and the enemy just convulses if you're if the sprites overlap. Like it's just like I said, it's just not very tight, not very fluid. Like it's like the, there are lots of animation cycles in it. It's just that it's not particularly you know tight. You just kind of swing your weapon in the general direction of an enemy, and they'll go and they'll unleash the stun lock animation cycle and that's pretty much it like a modern a modern game would you know commit to having tighter controls i think i mean arcade games were usually pretty sloppy and even back then like i remember that like, games would come out in the nes and the collision detection would be a lot tighter or probably because i don't know why they did it that way but i remember when final fight came out that was a big deal because there weren't that many fighting games with really tight controls back then. I mean, like, they were responsive, but... The, the, they were responsive, but it's like... Whoop! I forgot, yeah, if you stay in the water, the missiles come after you. We'll get there in a second. Oh, I can't get it, okay. So I have to move the screen over, that could be a problem, yeah. So there's your problem. Okay, I guess I thought these sewers were silent. There is music in this level. What? Okay, that sucked. Give me the pizza. Got it. And I took three hits after getting the pizza, so whatever. Ow. Gimme. Yep, get up. See? Accidentally did the jump kick. Ow! Backstabber. Ow! See? Mm, it's a really tight area, as you can see. I have to do a stage select. Ow! Watch for that pizza. Ow! See, how did I die if all I did was a jump kick? And it does suck that I can't switch turtles. That is really lame. So I guess this is a Raphael playthrough, huh?
Now, some would say a game like this can't be good if you're playing solo, to which my response is Final Fight disproves that axiom. It just disproves the point. A good game is good in single player mode if, again, tight controls, you know, reasonably good AI, like that kind of thing. And if you think just playing with a second character makes a game good, well, fine, but you don't want to miss the idea that you can have good, you can have good controls in a game where that's just a single player. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't understand this idea that, yeah, games are more fun if you have a second human being to play with, usually, but... <laughs> this idea that games aren't good if you can't play two... Games like this can't be good if you don't have a second player. Like, I don't... Like, if it's a bad game, it doesn't automatically become good because you can play with somebody else. So if the game's just bad, I mean, fine. I mean, maybe the second player makes it more tolerable, but... But if it's a bad game, just call it a bad game. The problem isn't the lack of a second player. <laughs> Street Fighter 2 proved that a good game can have, you know, single player modes. Of course, a lot of people don't like fighting games. <laughs> I understand that. Of course, this isn't really a fighting game. It's just a, just a traditional Renegade-like brawler, obviously. It brought up the other question, like, why is, Re is Renegade a bad game if it's single player only? Like, why is Renegade, why are Renegade and Double Dragon better than Final Fight, really? <laughs> I mean, you could say the Final Fight's not fair, and you're not wrong. He said he can't have more than six Mousers at a time. Yeah, the strategy guide lied to me, just a second. That, 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 they straight up lied. Yeah, he, he never throws out more than six at a time, well, there are eight on the screen right now, freaking liars. No. Get buttons. I really wish I can figure out what the controls were because they're not explain. There is no manual that explains the controls. The manual for this game is just like a parts manual for arcade for arcade owners, people who bought the cabinet. Does explain how to play the freaking game. Because, I mean, there's some nuance to the controls, obviously, because they're different moves for different characters, but, you know, they're different moves based on when you press the attack button in midair, stuff like that, but they don't do a very good job of explaining that. And again, the roll kick is never explained. It's completely undocumented. Can I roll kick these guys? See, I can't do the roll kick. And that's the other problem. How do you keep the enemies from, from grabbing on you? I'm, I'm, sw I'm swinging my I'm swinging my weapon. They just keep jumping on me. Come and get him, yell brain. <laughs> Is he was supposed to run away? What? They don't give me the numbers of the stages anymore. <laughs> this has to be stage four, I think. Pokey, pokey. Oh, so you don't knock off the sign, it just spins. So you can hit the, you can hit the cones. Yeah, a plastic cone destroys them in one hit. A plastic cone destroys a robot in one hit, I mean, sure. I mean, yeah, we expect the logic from our games about anthropomorphic ninja turtles. He wants the explosion. There we go. Bastard. About to die again. How many quarters am I sipping? Through? How many quarters am I sipping here? There it is. Again, I can't pull off the roll kick reliably. This is another difference between this game and Final Fight. Like, all the moves you can usually do, no problem. And remember, they shoot their uh, guns at a downward angle because they can't hold it upright, I guess. These robots don't have the uh, shoulder strength to lift to lift an automatic weapon, I suppose. So they shoot at my feet. Now Rocksteady, on the, Rocksteady on the other hand, can uh, fire that gun at a 90 degree angle like he's supposed to. <laughs> Here goes the parking sign. 
Some of the sound effects just get kind of thrown in there. They throw in the stereo. <laughs> Just, well, not randomly, but it's like they kind of overemphasize the stereo sound. Okay, I don't remember this part. Yeah, this was a uh, Baxter the Fly in the NES game, because you can pin him in the corner and win that way. But obviously, the poor the poor uh, Famicom would never be able to play, have two bosses this large on screen at once. I want to say mutation didn't up their IQs any. See, it seems easier to dodge these guys than in the NES game, but it still seems kind of unfair when they counterattack you like that. Ow! It still seems kind of unfair when they counterattack you. Ah! Did I get him? Got one of them. Okay, I'm invincible, so I can get in three quick hits. Ow! Oh, there's the fourth. <laughs> That's what happened when you try to get the fourth. <laughs> See, I did the jumping slash that time, but not the jump kick. So, I mean, I'm not quite sure when the game allows you to jump kick and when it allows you to do the jumping slash. Yeah, see, I can't... Now I got my health back. <laughs> it's a party. See, the drums for this song are all on the right side, on the right side of the speaker. I don't know what's going on with that. <laughs> I, think, I think they might have emulated the music by, like, taking each channel and, like, moving it to the left or right. <laughs> like, it doesn't feel like... I don't think the arcade game is supposed to sound like this. They might have completely re-engineered the, the stereo spectrum for this music. Not that I'm complaining, because I've only heard the music in mono before. Ow! Sorry, I keep doing that. I guess this will be a Raphael playthrough. I can't switch turtles. Yeah, at least in an arcade cabinet, you can switch. You can switch to the other coin slot. Ow! Yes, this is a lot. This this is a lot more refined than the, than the NES game, as you would expect. But it's still pretty simplistic. You just keep cartwheeling into the stationary tire, doofus. Now you can't pick this up or kick it or move it. It's just an obstacle. It's also, you're gonna jump over it at least. E foot. So how do I do the jumping attack? Oh, I, I think if I wait till I descend... That, no, that still didn't work. So I hold the button down, and then when I start to... See, I don't know. When do I do the jumping? When do I do the jumping slash? Because doing the jump kick is fine, but if I accidentally do the jumping slash, I don't know what... I don't know what the distinction is. Like, how do I know when to do the jump kick and when I do the jumping slash? Like, what determines that? I mean, it's not random, I don't think. See, I did the jumping slash that time. In the NES game, it was, it was very easy to do one move or the other. Like, the control said, okay, look, you're gonna do a jump kick. You're, if you're in midair, you're gonna do a jump kick. But if you press, but if you press both buttons at the same time, then you're gonna do the jumping attack. And that was it. You had three moves. <laughs> I think Raphael was the only person who had the roll kick in this game. And Don, all the other turtles, I think, were exactly the same. Arguably, Don Tell had a wider reach, but I think that's, I think it's kind of apocryphal, if I'm being honest. It might not make a difference in this game. I think it's totally apocryphal that Donatello had a longer reach. I mean, the people I heard it from were kids. They weren't exactly, you know, QA testers. <laughs> or YouTubers. Of course, there's one way to find out. I can do a data dump and see how strong all these moves are, which I'll probably end up doing eventually. 
because I was able to prove that Streets of Rage, all the characters' moves were exactly were exactly the same strength. The only difference was, you know, how much how many hit points they had and how fast they were. <laughs> I mean, I, I did my uh, research videos for that already for Streets of Rage. If you want to see them? They were da they're data dumps. They're in the public domain. Well, they're in the Creative Commons. So, if you want to see the evidence, it's documented <laughs> right on this channel. Ow! I did it like seven or eight years ago, so it, the video the video footage doesn't look great. But all you need to know is that if I do these number of kicks and these number of punches, this is how much damage they do. <laughs> that's why I called it a data dump. It's just evidence collection, that's all. And remember, you play them as kids, you probably think that, you know, you probably would think that, you know. You know, Adam is stronger than Blaze. Well, he has more hit points than Blaze, but the moves are all just equally strong. So, you know. Hey, where am I going? Oh, there we go. You suck. I'm, like, trying to not touch the spikes. <laughs> you know. And now we get the, yeah, here we go. And of course there are three uh, helicopters here instead of just two like in the NES game. Was my been, was there, were there two helicopters on screen at once in the NES game or is it just one? Got one. That careful. You do have some aerial control on these jumps, so that's good. They got me. Aim for the aim for the uh, shadows. Yeah, I got two of them. Careful. Doing another live. Yeah. These explosions always did look pretty good. So yeah, there are more enemy types here than in the NES game, which doesn't surprise me if I'm being honest. Ow! And you can understand the compromise that they had to make to get that NES game made. Ow! Because swore I made contact with him. Ah, careful! I can just get behind them. I could just avoid them entirely, let's be honest. You aim right for that edge. Hang on, guys. Oh, there's an actual turn there. <laughs> Slick drive in April. <laughs> but I remember the NES game was just like a... There was no turn at all. It was just like a, it was like, it was like some kind of Jersey wall in the middle of the highway. So how goes the content tour so far? You know, like I said, stuff like that. Like, how do you hit those guys? Stay on the ground, I guess. No, if I stay on the ground, they just grab onto my arm anyway. I could try a roll kick, but again, I can't reliably do a roll kick in this game. The timing seems too specific, so I end up doing I end up doing that little jumping hop, that little King of Fighters looking jumping hop, <laughs> which isn't a real jump kick. See, I did the roll kick there, but there's no easy way to like pull off the roll kick. Ow, bastard! See, I tried to roll kick him there. See. That's what I mean when I say the controls just feel... The collision detection just doesn't seem very reliable. I take damage not because, you know, I whiffed on an attack that I... Fit, that I it's not because I whiffed on an attack that was guaranteed to miss. It just feels like I whiffed on an attack that the game decided I hadn't quite connected on. Like, it's hard to determine if I'm going to connect on any of these hits. That's what I mean. A game like Final Fight is almost never a problem. I was able to kind of suss out, okay, 
I'm gonna make contact if I'm this close to an enemy. I'm gonna grab him if I'm this close. Like, I, one, of the, one of the useful strategies of Final Fight was knowing that you can grab somebody reliably, or almost reliably, like almost all of the time. The high-level strategies are always about sneaking up on an enemy and grabbing them and knowing that you can make contact. Which you can't really do here, because there's no reliable grab move. You just kind of randomly throw an enemy over your head. And when you throw them over your head, they don't, they don't turn become projectiles like in Final Fight. Like, you'll throw an enemy in Final Fight and it becomes a projectile that knocks down other enemies when it makes contact with them. Like, that's, le that's a legitimate strategy in Final Fight. But you can't do that here. So there's no reliable way to control the screen, because you don't know if your moves are going to make contact most of the time. Which I think is the problem. Most people who play this game are like teenagers and tweens. I mean, they probably weren't trying to pick up on that nuance. But when you play Final Fight and you really you spend like maybe an hour picking up on the ins and outs of Final Fight's combat, it makes a lot more sense. At least it's more reliable. And I would argue that's the reason why Street Fighter 2 became a hit, is that they cleaned up the controls and made it reliable enough that, that most of the time it seemed to work. I mean, obviously there was some nonsense, like, you know, the invincible headbutts and the Chun-Li being invincible when she does her little, when she starts her little helicopter animation. So, I mean, stuff like that. But a lot of this game just seems to have a lot of cheap hits. So I'm not really a fan of that. So you had six helicopter bots in the ninja, in the NES game. But now you have like nine, I think. Eight or nine. So I'm trying to jump kick, but I can't reliably jump kick. Because I'm doing the jump, I'm doing the, the swat instead. I'm trying to do the jump kick, not the jumping slash. See, there you go. So I need a reliable way to do that jump kick. See, I did a jumping slash there, and I meant to do the jump kick. Ow. And you can't do that, uh... You know, jump... That jumping attack where you double hit the... Where you double hit these roadkill Rodneys and trap them against the side. Okay, that was cheap. Idiot. Got him. Guess how long will this fight take? Ow! Still in another quarter. Quote unquote quarter. I was say, I think I trapped him. <laughs> ah, you got me. Do I have to, like, be right on top of them? Yeah, that almost worked. There you got me. Yeah, I think I had him trapped for a second. Yeah, I had him trapped for a second. Got a few cheap hits on him. One more should do it. Now he's dead. Because in the NES game, I needed, like, what? 57 jump kicks to finally bring him down? And remember, the compromise was every time you landed from a jump kick, every time the enemy recovered from a jump kick, he would immediately try to, try to punch you as soon as he recovered from the jump kick. I always did love this music. So I just, it's a bit its a bit too fast. They sped it up too much, I think. The NES version slowed it down. So I think they kind of cleaned up the music there. Ow. Ow! Ah, careful. I think they don't turn around. Too bad the lasers don't hurt these guys. Ow! Ow! 
got me on the landing. What was that all about? That's what I mean. Like, there's no reliable way to know if you're going to take a hit or not. It's just... It just feels like you might... It just feels like your hits might connect or they might not. It's like a blob. It's like a blob attack. Not a, not a reliable punch, you know what I mean? Okay, that's a nice touch. Like I said, we're adults now. We can... We're sophisticated enough to understand what we're playing now. If we didn't... Even though we didn't when this game came out. <laughs> but I think uh, Shredder's Revenge... Is supposed to be the game that basically... Is the game this game was always trying to be. That they made into an actual factual co-op brawler. With very good combat, supposedly. We'll see how it goes. I mean, we play Streets of Rage 4, like we've played, uh, what was the other big one? I mean, I would argue that the, the modern brawlers aren't games like this or Streets of Rage 4. They're games like, you know, Arkham City and, what, Arkham City, Shadow of Mordor, you know, games like that. Here come the balls. So for me, I thought the balls are bigger than this. At least they're easier to dodge. See, the problem with... See, I can choose Nightmare Mode if I want, but just having all those enemies on screen just looks like... This feels like a... This feels like a... Just a, just a torture chamber. Because, I mean, there'd be so many enemies on screen and they would just stun lock you to death all the time and you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to guarantee... Like, if this were the NES game, there was a Nightmare Mode, that might be more manageable. Just turn off the flickering and the slowdown. Because the because the because the moves are more likely to connect in the NES game, if I'm being honest. Like when I do a jump, like when I attack in the air, I know I'm going to do a jump kick. Here, there's a 50/50 chance I'm going to do a jumping swat, which is not what I want to do most of the time. Most of the time, I just want to do a regular jump kick. See, like that. But I miss on I whiff on the jump kick. So I don't know what the I don't know what the difference is. I'm playing this game for half an hour. I think I can figure out when the jump kick would come out. But again, I can't guarantee. Wow! <laughs> Forgot about that. I can't guarantee when the kick, when the foot's gonna come out. Okay, I thought I got him. Okay, got me. I guess I want to see if I can kind of sneak behind him. Nah, I like that. Yeah, I think I kind of trapped him there for a second. Yeah, I kind of trapped him there. Ow! Bastard. What, no word balloons? Ow! ow. So you whacked me into the cage. There's your problem. Got him. I mean, at least in the NES game, I could reliably do a jump kick spam. <laughs> I could reliably spam the jump kick and beat him eventually. Here, it just feels like, okay, I'll just whack. I'll just press the attack button if I'm anywhere near him. Just kind of hope it doesn't, kind of hope it connects. I'm not really a fan of that. I mean, is there any real strategy to this? I mean, there is. The speedrunners probably know it. But... Go a little bit higher. Let's see, I tried to see if I can avoid him a bit. Ow! Yeah, if I could reliably jump kick him, I would do that. But I can't find a reliable way to make... I can't find a reliable way to connect on an attack. Okay, got me. Yeah. I'm just keep throwing in more quarters till we win, I guess. This is the kind of game people, this is the easy mode people are talking about, really. <laughs> I mean, there is a god mode in this game, but I mean. Yeah, it's just 
It's just for taking quarters, let's be honest. This is what we had to deal with before loot boxes, kids. Having to constantly steal quarters from your parents so you can keep playing these unfair brawlers. Gone. He's almost dead. I mean, strategy? Yeah, whatever, I guess. Ow! He's recovering faster. I'm invincible! Okay, where's the clone? When the dude loses his helmet, he's the clone. Some are liably doing jump kicks now, but I might not even connect on half of them. What? <laughs> Hate those. Again, insta kills. Everyone's favorite uh, enemy attack. Okay, he's the clone. Of course, he can still attack, but... Okay, I can't separate these guys. He's dead. Okay, hold on. I gotta figure out where the other clone is. I was trying to keep him alive long enough for me to aim for the other guy. See, I'm trying to jump kick him, but he swats me away with that dumb sword of his. Ah! Ow! Bastard. Okay, he's the clone. Okay, they can't both be clones. Well, kill, kill both of them, whatever. I win. Yeah, so strategy? Nah. I don't know. <laughs> like I said, I, there was no reliable way for me to determine if I could do jump kicks versus jumping slashes. So. I could never really find a reliable way to make con to like attack enemies in this game. That's actually one thing about the NES game that I kind of prefer, is that it was kind of easier to determine what attack was going to happen at any given time. It's like, yeah, okay, I'm doing the jumping slash. I'm doing the jump kick. That's guaranteed to happen if I do it this way. And this music sounds like it's from Gradius. And I'm not complaining. <laughs> I believe this is the same musician from the uh, Turtles in Time game. Uh, Izumi, I believe his name is. Moriyama25. Asano, Asano does sound familiar. Yeah, there's Izumi, your musician on this. Miki Cheng. I uh, don't know Miki, actually. But Izumi, Izumi did do the uh, sequel, I remember that. But yeah, that's the entire game. And um, I died a bunch of times because, eh, strategy. Whatever, I only came in second place. I mean, that's the Ninja Turtles arcade experience. I guess I'll uh, try a couple more just for funsies. Well, you know, I was... oh, that's right, because I, I didn't destroy those uh, helicopters. 
So I guess I'm five points short of a perfect score. <laughs> I mean, okay, I don't want to play as him. Okay, let's let's try. We're gonna end the video on it with a bit of a tease. For funsies, let me try nightmare mode. We're gonna remove the penalty bombs because those are quarter munchers. Those are designed to keep people from dilly dally. Stage select is nice. Madison Square Avenue, what's... Well... Of course, there were no extra stages like the, uh... Snow in Central Park or the Dojo level like in the NES port, but, you know. That turned the game from a 30-minute game to a 50-minute game. Uh, we'll play as Donatello. But we're in nightmare mode, so I'm curious how that'll go. Cowabunga! Cowabunga! Fire! Hang on, April. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Turtle power. Everyone else, everyone else in the building is going to be okay, I guess. <laughs> now we're just here to rescue April. We don't care so much about anyone else in the skyscraper of the building. Obviously, our boy doesn't do a roll kick. See, again, how do I do the jumping slash? Maybe, you should, maybe it's just harder with Raphael. Maybe that's the problem. Ow! Five enemies on screen now. Get behind him. I don't know if, again, I don't know if that's a reliable way to do jump kicks. See, I don't know what I don't know what the difference is. I, what when do I have to press the button to get a jump kick every time? I still haven't figured that out. I've already beaten this game. It can't be random, can it? Then again, knowing, a, knowing it's a Konami arcade game, it could be totally random. Heck, some of the attacks in Turtles in Time in the arcade were random. They were frustrating when I tried playing. I'm like, wait a minute, you're telling me all these command throws that are in the in Super NES game aren't in the arcade game? They're just totally random? They can just randomly throw enemies at the screen, you randomly grab them by the arm and whip them? It's a good thing this fire doesn't hurt you. <laughs> yeah, it's just cosmetic. Yeah, I guess this does count as nightmare mode. See, I did a jump kick and he somehow swatted me out of the air. Come on. This game. Where are the other balls? They're coming, I guess. Yeah, no way I could have protect. No way I could have prevented that. See, the balls, I guess the, I thought the balls were bigger. Yeah, I thought some reason I thought, thought the balls were twice the size of those. So you can't switch turtles during a fight. That sucks. Ow! It's not as bad as that was. I played that Captain Commando port on the PlayStation 2. I couldn't even choose two of the characters. <laughs> Maybe I needed like a super multi tap or something. I don't know. Like I said, that's what I'm talking about. You just kind of swing your weapon in the general direction of the enemy, and you'll probably make contact half the time. It's lame. So there's no reliable way for me to know if I'm going to connect on any of my moves. And it's like, again, as a kid, this never would have bothered me because I wouldn't even know how to even, I wouldn't even know how to articulate that, that unreliability. But as an adult, I'm like, look, I played Final Fight. I know what it's like to play a game where if you press the button, you know you're going to make contact or not. 
you can actually grab an enemy by getting close to them. Like, it's guaranteed, you're guaranteed to grab them. Like, that's not a problem. Ow. So we're gonna stop playing after a while, but like I said, it's just... So this is nightmare mode, just more characters on screen. More enemies on screen. Like, if you're resigned to the idea that, that attacks don't have to be reliable, they just have to come out when you press the button, and maybe and maybe you make contact with them, maybe you don't, you could probably like this game. But I, I, I don't think I can I don't think I can appreciate this game anymore. It's just I need to play a game where I can actually grab enemies if I get close to them. You know what I mean? Like I need a reliable way to deal with an enemy that's right in front of me. If I if I'm too, if I'm I don't want to whiff on an attack because I don't know if the animation's gonna connect. You know what I mean? Like I, like I need a more reliable I need more reliable visual feedback than that. Again, that's the difference between playing games as a kid and playing them as an adult. You just kind of have to... You kind of want a more reliable way to attack enemies. They're just mashing on the attack button and hoping that you make contact. Like I said, I'm sure the speedrunners will have a lot of fun with this game, trying to find reliable ways to whack through enemies. They probably found some kind of hack or something. They probably found some kind of exploit that's useful. Because you can't attack more enemies at once, it's more than I can save them for Battletoads, I guess. <laughs> but it's not like Final Fight, where you can, like, legitimately take out five or six enemies at once if you line up your attacks properly. Like, it's not that hard in Final Fight. You take that for granted, you take that for granted unless you play a game like this, and you, which doesn't have that kind of targeting ability. So Donnie doesn't have a roll kick. He can still do a jumping slash that Raphael can't do. Raphael can do a jumping slash while he's descending from a jump most of the time, I guess. But again, no reliable way to know if your attacks are going to connect, and that's still a problem. And that's, that, that's, a, that's a disappointment. So that worked. So sometimes I jump kick and sometimes I jump, sometimes I do the jumping swap. I don't know exactly when. So I might make contact, I might not, I don't know. You have combos in this game, which you don't have in the NES game, so I guess that counts for something. Why'd you put the gun away, doofus? Well, he brings it back out now. Ow! Okay, we've had enough. Uh, we'll check on a couple of things. No filters. Yeah, so will I play this game again? Probably not. If I can find a more reliable way to make the attacks work, I might come back and play it, but this is way too janky for me. It's a shame, too, because I put about five or six dollars into the arcade machine when it originally launched back at the Putt-Putt Arcade back in the day. I mean, I wasn't expecting this game to be good because I did play I did play an emulated version of it like about two decades ago, back when I was younger and less willing to hunt down old arcade games. I mean, there are people who wanted to spend hundreds of dollars to buy this arcade cabinet when they became 20-something. Could you imagine spending like $600 on this arcade machine and having to maintain it, among other things? Just, no. But I bought this game for 10 bucks, so... Like, I think it was 15 I forget. I had, I had a bunch of store credits, so there you go. But yeah, if you were wondering... The arcade cabinets are in the back. But no, like, actual manual manual. Yeah, so if you want to know where the, uh... If you want to know where the fuse amps are on this arcade cabinet, there you go. Again, imagine spending hundreds of dollars for this unit, having to maintain it, 
And then just to play this for like 40 minutes and then never touch it again, I guess. <laughs> difficulty of the game. I didn't see a difficulty slider here. I mean, there's obviously nightmare mode, but we're going to get to that later because we already turned it on. You can play upside down if you want, I guess. Now, why would you turn the TV upside down? No idea. This game doesn't have a Tate mode. What do you know? There's a nut for a micro for a micro switch mounting screw. I mean, obviously there are people who buy this stuff, but it's like, okay, but is the game actually good? <laughs> like if we come to that, if we come to that understanding. Well, you know, they have some signatures there. Yeah, they signed off on this. First of all, does it, does it say here that the uh, speakers... Like, is there a left and a right speaker? Or is there only one speaker with mono Ural sound? I want to say the arcade game was not in stereo, but I don't have a machine that could prove that. I don't have a machine around where I can prove that. Required power capacity. Weren't there some two joystick cabinets where you can choose the turtles? Were they all four? Were they all four player cabinets? No, you know. No, sir, I don't like it. I liked it when I was younger and didn't know any better. That's my review of this game. C minus. Music's good, animation's good, combat, ugh. No, combat is not good. I'll just play Final Fight instead. Sorry. Oh, gotta do an audio cue. Ah, uh, just a second. A, B, search, B, A. Ninja Turtles the arcade game, that was the Raphael playthrough. <laughs> 